Okay, we're going to cover chapter 14.1, which is human chromosomes. Um, so we do something called a karyotype. Um, to make what makes us uniquely human, we have to explore the human genome. A genome is just your full set of genetic information um, that an organism carries in its DNA. So um, a study of any genome starts with looking at chromosomes, which again, remember from last unit, um, when your DNA is bundled up and condensed um, found in the nucleus. Um, to see human chromosomes clearly, cell biologists will photograph cells in mitosis because that's when your chromosomes are condensed and easy to see. Um, so here's a karyotype. Um, scientists then cut the chromosomes from the photographs and arrange them in a picture known as a karyotype. It shows the complete diploid set of chromosomes grouped together in pairs arranged in order of decreasing of in order of decreasing size. So here, like for pair one, one of them comes from your mother and one of them comes from your father to make you. Um, so a karyotype in a typical human um, would contain 46 chromosomes or 23 pairs, which includes the sex chromosomes down here. So this karyotype um, is a is a male. So a lot of times um, karyotypes are done. They use um, for one technique is called amniocentesis, where they take fluid from the amniotic fluid that has the um, and it actually has chromosomes from the baby um, to do genetic testing um, to see if there's any abnormalities. And we'll cover that next. Um, next time around. So for the sex chromosomes, yeah, two of the four, 46 chromosomes in the human genome are your sex chromosomes because they determine your um, the gender, your sex. So females will have two X chromosomes and X chromosomes are bigger. Males will have one X chromosome and one Y chromosome. So how exactly um, the probability of seeing of making males and females, um, you can look at it as almost like a Punnett square problem where you have a 50-50 ratio. So all human eggs, so from the female, carry a single X chromosome. So in an egg, there'll be one X chromosome, and the other half of the eggs would be the other X chromosome. However, half of all sperm carry an X chromosome, because males have one X chromosome, and then a Y chromosome. Um, so it's actually the male, technically, that determines the sex of the offspring. So if the if a Y chromosome, sorry about that, um, if a Y chromosome, let's get it up, there we go, if a Y chromosome fertilizes the egg, then you'll have a boy. If an X chromosome in the sperm fertilizes the egg, you'll have a girl. So this ensures that about half the zygotes will be males and half will be females. Um, so if you're looking at the differences in the X and Y, um, there's more than, more than 1,200 genes found in the X chromosome, which is a bigger one, which is shown. The Y chromosome is much, much smaller and contains only about 140 genes, which most of them are actually associated with male sex determination. There's one gene for sure, the SRY gene, that's definitely um, involved with sex determination and also used for sperm development as well. The remaining 44 human chromosomes are known as autosomal chromosomes or your autosomes, which are everything else besides your sex chromosomes. Um, the complete human genome, again, consists of 46, so the autosomes are 44, and then your two sex chromosomes. Um, so to summarize it, yes, females, if you wrote them out, you have 46 chromosomes XX, males, you are 46 chromosomes XY. All right, so what patterns of human traits do we see? Uh, many human traits follow a pattern of simple dominance, like we've been covering in the past um, week. And then some of them have a co-dominant inheritance that we kind of briefly talked about last week. We'll see in a bit. Um, and because the X and Y chromosomes determine sex, the genes located on them show a pattern of inheritance called sex linked. Um, so one example of a dominant and recessive allele is for like skin and hair color. Um, so the MC1R, um, if you have recessive alleles, that would produce red hair. So an individual who receives both those recessive alleles for that gene would have red hair. Dominant alleles for MC1R gene help produce like darker hair colors. Um, another simple dominance is that RH factor we talked about with blood. Um, if you are have a um, positive and negative um, genotype, then you are RH positive. And if your homozygous recessive or the two recessive alleles, RH negative, RH negative, you are a negative type of blood. Um, so speaking of blood typing, we already covered this. I'm going to go really quickly through this. Um, there's three alleles for blood, IA, IB, and lowercase i. Here's a nice little chart here. 
again, goes through the genotypes for type A and B and so forth that we talked about. The antigens, again, are like the little the um, almost like an identification marker that's saying, you know, like if you have antigen A, you're type A, antigen B, you're type B, antigen A and B, you're type AB, and if you have no antigens ID marker, then you're type O. And this is a nice little, um, just a little FYI chart shows you who you could donate to if you had your blood types on type A. So I can donate to people that have type A and AB, and I can receive blood from those that have A and O. Um, again, you can't, like for example, a type B person can't donate to a type A person because A people produce antibodies against B that would attack the Bs, and vice versa for type B people, they produce antibodies against type A, so that would clot and that would not be good. Um, type O has both antibodies A and B, and that's why they can only get blood from type O. Um, the type AB people have no antibodies, so they can receive blood from almost pretty much everyone there, A, B, and AB. Um, so again, we're not going to get really too in-depth here with this Rh negative. Um, that won't be on the test. Um, but this, again, the next few slides are going through examples. So you can look at the PDF notes to get more examples. Um, I'm going to kind of go through this right now. Um, again, if you're type AB, you have both the A and the B um, allele. If you're little i, little i, again, you're type O. Um, if you're B, you can be IB, IB, like homozygous or heterozygous IB, little i. Okay, now new, new stuff here, sex linked. So sex linked inheritance um, genes that are located on the X and Y chromosomes show a pattern of inheritance called sex linked. So it's called sex linked because the gene is located on the sex chromosome. So genes on the Y chromosome are found only in males and are passed directly from father to son. Um, genes located on the X chromosome, though, are found in both sexes. So, but the fact that men have just one X chromosome leads to some interesting consequences that lead to these things called sex-linked genes. Um, so, for example, um, humans have three genes responsible for color vision, all located on the X chromosomes. Um, so on the X chromosome. So, in males, a defective allele for any of these genes results in color blindness and ability to distinguish certain colors. Um, the most common form is red-green colorblind, where you can't really tell the difference between red and green. And this occurs in about 1 in 12 males, which is pretty prevalent. Um, in females, however, colorblindness only affects about 1 in 200. So in order for a recessive allele, like colorblindness, to be expressed in females, it must be present in both copies of the X chromosome she inherits. Um, so the recessive phenotype of sex-linked genetic disorders tend to be more much more um, common among males than females because males only receive one X chromosome. So if that one X chromosome happens to have the recessive allele, then they automatically have that like that recessive trait, like colorblindness. As opposed to females, if they re received one X chromosome with the recessive and one with the dominant, well, that one X chromosome with the dominant um, would be shown phenotypically. So it doesn't matter if she has that recessive allele, she's not going to be colorblind because of her one dominant allele on the other X chromosome. So males are kind of stuck with whatever X chromosome they receive. Um, another interesting co thing called X chromosome inactivation. So if just one X chromosome is enough for cells in males, then how does a cell adjust to the X extra X chromosome in females? So in female cell cells, most of the genes in one of the X chromosomes are randomly switched off forming something called a dense region in the nucleus known as a bar body. So this inactivation of one of the X chromosomes. So bar bodies are generally not found in males because, again, they only have one single X chromosome that they need the, all those genes to be um, shown. So X chromosome inactivation also happens in other ant mammals, and we're going to see one right now in cats that makes cool um, different spotting on their coats. So one X chromosome may have an allele for like orange spots and the other X chromosome may have an allele for black spots. So this is called a calico cat. Whenever you see a calico cat, it's most likely going to be female. Um, in cells, in some parts of the body, one X chromosome is switched off and in other parts of the body, the other X chromosome is switched off. So as a result, the cat's fur has a mixture of orange and black fur. So in this area, um, the bar body was the one with the black gene, so only the orange one is showing up. But then this part of body of the body, the X chromosome, 
X chromosome with the orange coloring allele is turned off while the black one is on, so that's why it's black over here. Um, so you'll see this cool calico effect. So male cats would just have one X chromosome. Um, they would just have spots of one color, which you'd either see, for example, here, um, the male has the X chromosome with the orange, so he's going to be like all orange. The male here has um, inherited an X chromosome with the black allele, so he's all black. So for females, um, they can have both X chromosomes have the black allele, so she'd be all black. Um, female, both X chromosomes with the orange, so she'd be all orange. But then here, where she has one X chromosome orange, one X black, um, in certain areas, the orange one is turned off, so it'd be black there. In certain other areas of her body, the um, chromosome X chromosome with the black allele is turned off, so she's orange. So very fun. All right, now something called pedigrees. This will be the last section of this um, little chapter here. Um, we can use these things called pedigree, pedigrees to analyze human inheritance. So the information gained from pedigree analysis makes it possible to determine the nature of genes, like how they're inherited, like dominant, recessive, or co-dominant, sex-linked. Um, and alleles are associated with inherited human traits. So um, to analyze a particular inheritance pattern, it something called a pedigree. It almost looks like a family tree. Um, a pedigree, again, shows um, the presence or absence of a trait according to the relationships between parents, siblings, and offspring. So here is a um, pedigree with three different generations. Um, these circles represent females, and these squares represent males. And we're going to be looking at this in a couple of slides, this white forelock trait, which we'll see in a bit. Um, so this pedigree, again, shows one human trait, a white lock of hair, just to right above the forehead. So this guy has the white lock here, forelock. Um, it is has a dominant type of inheritance. So the ones that are blue are people in this family that have the white forelock, and the ones that are white do not. Um, so at the top of the chart, here's the grandfather and the grandmother. Um, they had three children, a, a son and two daughters. So the grandfather had the white forelock, grandma did not, um, the son does, first daughter does not, second daughter does. Um, and we can see their grandchildren here, um, about three out of the five grandchildren have the white forelock. So because the white forelock trait is dominant, all of the family members in the pedigree lacking this trait must be homozygous recessive. So grandma has to be homozygous recessive daughter has to be homozygous recessive. Um, the guy that this daughter married is homozygous re recessive and so forth. So, and then to go back, for some of these, you can, um, so for this son, he has to be heterozygous because he, so he, he probably got a recessive allele because his daughter um, does not have it. So that you can do some kind of puzzles here to figure, kind of work backwards. Like, well, she is, like, let's say, four lock is F. So little F, little F, well, he must be big F, little F. Um, so, and the grandpa here has to be heterozygous because they had a daughter that is homozygous recessive. So he had to have passed on a recessive allele in order for a daughter here to be homozygous recessive. So there's fun little puzzles you can do with pedigrees. So the information gained from the pedigree analysis makes it possible to determine the nature of genes and alleles associated with inherited human traits. So based on the pedigree, again, um, you can often determine if an allele for a trait is dominant or recessive, autosomal, or sex-linked. Okay, that is it. Thank you.